us. And we're just honored that he would take that step tonight to minister to us. And we want to support him and back him up. And, and uh, it, it's really a great a great honor that somebody would just would just say, Lord, I'm going to obey you. If y'all don't know what kind of nerve that takes. But you know how y'all resist against the Lord when he asks you to just dance or shout or go speak to somebody. Well, it's different when you get up in front of the congregation and it's your turn to minister. But he's heard from the Lord and he's got a message to give us tonight. So let's welcome Brother Caleb Levi to this pulpit and let's pray for him that as he comes, the Lord would just minister through him in a mighty way. Everybody say, God bless Brother Caleb. God bless Brother Caleb. Praise the Lord. Well, good God is good, isn't he? Oh, yes, he Amen. Is. Amen. Before we even start the message, I would like to pray over the word first. So if you will, please bow your head with me. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity you have given us to come to your house and worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that this message go forth as you see fit, that it will not go void, but it will touch every heart that it Amen. needs to touch. That there will be no interference, nothing straying from the mind, Father, but that it not be my words, but your words through me. And I just ask all this in the precious name of Jesus, I ask and pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So tonight's sermon is entitled, Knowing Oneself. All right. We're going to be in the chapter 1 of the book of James and Jeremiah a little bit. All right. But my first thought for you is, do you waver or stand tall in your faith? In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8, it says, My brethren... Count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. So I, I like to break down the word as the Holy Spirit reveals it to me and try to find its greater meaning. And the Holy Spirit's really good about doing that. All right. So I'm going to break down two words for you in verse 5. Liberally and abrative. Because those are common words in our society today. Yeah. Liberally, in large or generous amounts, and abrative. To find fault with or reproach severely. So what God is wanting us to get from this is if we have any lack of wisdom, just ask him and he's generous to give it. Yes, he and is. he's not going to judge you for it. That's right. That's he right. just wants you to ask him. Think of it this way. Uh, parents, they want their children to have faith in them. I'm sure when we were all little, we had a, a need or there was a struggle that came up and we didn't know what was going on. We'd ask mommy or daddy, hey, uh, what's going on? Don't worry. It's going to be okay. Yeah. As children, if we're able to have that faith in our earthly parents, why can't we have it in our heavenly father? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's been faithful enough to us, hasn't he? Sure. Yes. yes. Amen. So I'm seeing it as when we pray to him, we've already received what we've asked for as long as it aligns up with his word. Amen. We're just, it's manifested in the spiritual realm of things, and yes. we're waiting for it to manifest in the natural. Yes. Uh -huh. We receive it all through faith. All right. And as Brother Grace told on this Wednesday, faith is not a verb, it's, an, it's more of an action per se, you know? Yeah. So, just think about that tonight. Do we waver or do we stand in our faith? Amen. Could we tell ourselves that we come boldly before God? Or do we stand off to the side and kind of hope he hears us? Uh -huh. My second thought for you tonight is, does your flesh overwhelm your spirit? Uh -huh. In James chapter 1, verses 12 through 17, it said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust.
lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So again, again, two definitions I want to break down here. All right. Do we really understand what lust and enticed mean? So I'll, I'll break it down this way. Lust is a strong desire for something. It's usually sexual, but the more God revealed it to me, it can be anything. Because yeah. the lust itself, it occurs in the mind. All right. And then if not corrected, it will result in a physical action. So as strange as these examples sound, these were the ones God brought before me. Here's how little of a lust can bring to great trouble. Yeah. A serial killer, for instance. They, the first thought they have is, I want to kill that person. That thought, if they begin to premeditate on it, they go deeper and deeper until in their mind there's no turning back. Right. And it just turns into action. Uh -huh. Rapists are the same way. They see a woman, they lust after her, and that lust turns into physical action. Right. So here's, here's our problem with our society. They took the Bible out of schools. They took it out of just in general public. You have to be careful when you pray or when you teach people because you could be just condemned for it. Yeah. But that's our problem in society. They're not taught this. So they think what they're doing is okay. They're not taught any differently. They think um, if it was the lust per se, they're just thinking in their mind. They're not realizing the... <clears throat> Majority of every killer, they will tell you it started with one thought. Yeah. That's right. So just think about that, how little lust can bring you to great sin. It enticed, That's right. attracted or tempted by offering pleasure or advantage. Sum that up, seeking self-gratification. Yeah. So what it is saying here. Is then, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own strong desires and attracted to self gratification. All right. Here's how, here's again how dangerous this is. When lust hath conceived, when your thought has just continually gone on and on, and it turns to sin. In this case, serial killer, the killing is a sin. In the other case, a rapist, the rape is a sin. And it also says, go on, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Well, these people, they pretty much lose their lives. They either get locked away forever, or the ones that do go out, they're spiritually dead. Yeah. They, they don't understand what's going on, and they're just lost to their own pleasures. <laughs> and if we as Christians don't get to them, they're turned over to a reprobate mind. All right. So, it's just... Thinking, how is a sinner going to want to be a Christian if they can't tell the difference between right. a sinner and a Christian? All right. I mean, I walk out in the world all the time, and I see these people. They walk out of their churches, and it's just like they're a saint from the 9 to 12 service. Then when they walk out, you won't believe some of the stuff you hear. Uh -huh. We yeah. have to be the lights to this world. Think Amen. of it this way. If we're living in the dark and we're blending with the sinners, it's just dark and dark. They can't tell the difference. That's right. We're all walking right. in the dark, bumping into each other and everything else. Right. Amen. But if we're the light, they'll be walking and be like, whoa, what in the world? There's something different about this person. That's right. Uh -huh. hmm. maybe, maybe I should try to figure out what's going on here. And then we shine the light and tell them about the about what Jesus did for us, about how he saved us, how he keeps us, quote unquote, whole. We are made whole by Christ. So if we, as Christians, self-examine ourselves, maybe we could fix some of the faults we have and have a more clear walk with God. Amen. Amen. Putting it this way. The Apostle Paul told us that we should renew our minds daily. Amen. 
because, as I put, lust starts in the mind. So if you just let that continue and continue to build and you haven't renewed your mind, you're waiting for a, you're just waiting for the, shaking the soda bottle, waiting for it to, yeah. everywhere. Uh -huh. sure. So, that's really, it's just a short, sweet message that God gave me is we need to self-examine ourselves. Amen. Be more Christ-like. That's what Christian means to be Christ-like. Amen. It is. How are we supposed to be followers of Christ when they can't tell who we are? Come on, bro. So, yeah. in closing, none of us are perfect, but through relationship with Jesus, we can become better men and women. Next time you face temptation, pray. God yeah. always offers a way out. Yes, when you does. need answers, ask and believe, Amen. and you shall receive. God is with us, and don't forget, God is good. Amen. Amen. Amen.